All right, guys, welcome back to Victorum Games, and we are pretty excited today. We got something really cool to unbox for you guys and start with a whole series of videos and content that we're going to produce for you here. So as you can see here, this is the Victory at Sea demo pack. So uh, the game is not out yet. Uh, I believe end of June is the new launch date for that. Obviously, coronavirus is screwing all kinds of things up. But um, yeah, so we are going to take a crack at this thing here. We're going to get this open for you guys and show you everything that's in there. I'm going to do this one-handed here, but I think we can do it live. Instead of having to cut so first up you get a whole bunch of stack cards and, we'll, and some other goodies here we'll take a look at that in just a bit um then we got the uh, J uh japanese cruisers here so the magami and the kumano uh we got the destroyer so we get some fletchers and some fubukis and then the american cruiser so uh chicago uh, 1942 version and then the northampton 1942 so you got a fair bit of stuff in here and again keep in mind this is just a demo pack so really normally you're just gonna see this at retail stores it's not the full two-player starter set okay and then you get some six siders so six six siders and a couple ten siders so the game much like warlord's recent uh naval game so cruel seas and black seas they use a combination of these okay so we'll get into that as is usual, too, they give you this really nice, and this one seems a little bit bigger than maybe the other ones. Um, so you get a nice double-sided, I believe, naval mat here. Some more goodies here, so a whole sheet of tokens and templates. So you get your turning template here. Um, looks like some smoke clouds. Looks like uh, two of them, actually, so that's pretty cool. A uh, initiative token. Actually, it's probably better if we get this right side up for you guys make that make more sense so that thing here that is the initiative token basically just whoever the um, uh, first player is for that turn uh, damage tokens here of all sorts and kinds we'll get into that once we um, get our videos up for you guys on um, how to play and the different parts of the game and all that but for now um, just rest assured you get a ton of tokens rearm for things that um, are of like a limited quantity of uh, ammunition things like torpedoes for example stuff like that that needs to be rearmed um so yeah lots of neat little tokens there and obviously same deal on the back side there and then last but not least is the rule book for you guys and this will walk you through uh basically everything you need here so um you know run you through the basics uh, what what is basically on the ship stat card so how to read those there's actually quite a bit of information there so that is a very good breakdown there and then on the back you'll get um historical information various uh refits and things like that for the different ships so they walk you through all those terms uh what some of the tokens and tools and counters and all that stuff means um you do get to pre-measure in the game again we'll cover all this when we cover uh, the game on our how-to videos for you but um everything's really cool looks really exciting um so it runs you through the game turn, uh, the different phases. So there is, um, if you never played a naval game or anything like that, um, there's definitely some things to pick up for you, some concepts. So, uh, you know, different firing arcs, things like that. But anybody who's played any of the other uh, Warlord games, like, again, Cruel Seas, Black Seas, or if you've got some familiarity with things like X-Wing and Armada and other um, naval type games um you'll you'll be fine with a lot of this you'll be able to jump right in so you got different firing arcs uh modifiers um how damage accrues crippled ships really neat critical hit system and how that um uh, basically can gradually get worse and affect other parts of the ship so it's really really neat system that they developed there um end phase where you basically tidy things up you can give special orders to your ships that they, they can perform basically special actions that are a little bit beyond what you normally get um different ships have different traits along with you know certain guns and weapon systems and all that stuff um aircraft are a big part of the game too um as you might expect for a world war ii naval game for this scale so they run you through all that how aircraft work all the different kinds so you got fighters bombers dive bombers kamikazes torpedo bombers and also observation flights uh really cool thing is the game brings in uh what they call beyond the horizon fighting so um you can actually deploy things off table or you know if they're beyond a certain distance even and those are called basically over the horizon shots so not a good probability of getting hits with those but it does um help realistically kind of bring in the the distance that carriers would be from like the actual fighting so you know your carriers are not going to get in there and mix it up with uh your brawlers like your uh destroyers and battleships and stuff like that so they're going to be really far away from the fighting so it's a great way of representing that again we'll cover all that in more detail uh breaks down the aircraft stats uh, movement phase again for the aircraft, all that stuff. So you can dogfight, there's combat air patrols, just lots and lots of good stuff. Escorting various ships, uh, how to launch and recover planes, how much carriers can do there. 
um, if you are playing the Japanese how to actually kamikaze for those airplanes that get to do that. Um, and then basically how to, how to win victory points, um, tactical withdrawals, uh, really neat objective system too, where it's, uh, asymmetric basically. So, um, you're not necessarily playing, uh, the exact same mission goal as your opponent. So a really neat, uh, system there that they've kind of come up with. Uh, definitely looking forward to trying all that. Um, scouting, how all that works before battles and some of the benefits that that can uh, give you basically pregame. So a neat way of incorporating that asset or that facet of warfare. Some suggestions on like more competitive play, so like tournaments and stuff like that. And then some of the different deployment types that go along with that. And then some uh, basically uh, nation or national special rules uh, and a brief breakdown of what you get in the uh, boxes here. So U.S. Navy, um, they've got torpedo special rules and VT fuses. Uh, then they talk about the Idaho and the Corsair planes here. Um, moving on to the Japanese, long lances, fan salvos, and uh, firefighting are their special rules. And they bring in the Yamato class there. Um, not included here, but uh, definitely part of the game once you get your Japanese starter fleets and stuff like that. Royal Navy, they've got VT fuses as well. And here they're talking about the War Spite. Um, and again, uh, if you are a big fan of this period, uh, naval history, all that, or even just more of a casual person coming in from like maybe something like World of Warships, um, you'll obviously recognize a lot of these names from there if you didn't already know them. So lots of good stuff here to try this out in a different game that isn't a video game. And of course, the Kriegsmarine, the German Navy. So and then the Bismarck class there. And then they've got the Junkers, the J-87s, the Messerschmitts. Brits had the Swordfish, uh, those damn Swordfish. Uh, and then some of the smaller naval stuff, which hopefully we'll get to see realized as models down the road. But you get the Regia Marina, so the Italians. They've got coordination and unwilling soldiers, so not really uh, upgrades, uh, hint, hint. And then the Marine Nationale, uh, that's the French forces there. So cool thing there is some fought for the Axis, some fought for the Allies, so really neat stuff there. And a quick little um, preview of Italian aircraft. And then last but not least, we run through a quick uh, ship construction. So building the U.S. Navy stuff for this and then the Japanese. Um, and then very last page is a handy dandy rules summary. So really good stuff there. It definitely gives you everything you need to know on how to play the game. And from there, let's take a look at these cards as well. So let's see if you can't get this open here one handed. All righty. So we get our usual slider tokens that they've been using for damage systems. Um, you can also use dice alternately if um, these get like too messy for you, but um, they always include those. And then our cards here. So let's flip these over. So we get Fletcher Destroyers in here. So uh, if you don't know, Fletcher class destroyers were awesome uh, for the U.S. Navy. So you get, you know, the destroyer type, flank speeds, how fast you go, your armor, um, hull, which um, is not a lot. Um, then, as you might expect for a destroyer, special rules, so like traits, that'd be like radar and depth charges, the light guns here that they have, um, AA batteries, uh, port Star Wars torpedoes, um, those tabs down here is basically where you're keeping track of your damage, the points up here on the right, and some special rules on firing the five inch guns, and then on the back, just to give you an example, so, commissioned, how many crews, just some interesting historical facts on these, these guys, uh, this is like one of the most numerous uh, destroyer classes that were built. So yeah, over 175 of these. Um, so and you get different refits. So starting 42 all the way up through 45. And again, um, how to upgrade those. So you get a couple of these Fletcher class ones. Now let's flip these right side up here. So you get Northampton heavy cruiser, um, a little bit beefier, obviously than the destroyer. So, um, and a little bit slower though, some eight inch guns here, as you might expect, um, definitely uh, a little bit harder hitting, uh, some light guns, AA batteries, American, uh, cruisers for the most part did not have torpedo access. So, um, on the other hand, Japanese did. So we'll see that when we get to them, lots of refits, uh, and lots of options here. So, um, definitely, uh, something to keep in mind when you're building your list, which we'll get into down the road, another Northampton here. And then we get into the Japanese half. So we got the Fubuki class destroyers. So um, neat stuff here, light guns, AA battery, port uh, torpedoes, port starboard torpedoes. So basically it's got three torpedo tube uh, launchers. Um, so uh, really nasty stuff there. 
Um, and then let's see if we can't get this flipped over too. Several refits as well. And yeah, so we'll definitely get into that a little bit more too. So cool that we have options for those. Again, it seems like we get two cards for everything here. And then uh, last but not least, the Japanese heavy cruiser here, Mogami class, really good cruiser. Um, so 280 points, flank speed seven there, um, solid armor, good chunk of uh, hit points uh, or hull, however you want to look at it. Uh, several turrets, so as you can kind of see from the silhouette there, it had three in the front, three main turrets in the front, two in the back. Uh, some light guns, AA batteries, and then basically two port and two starboard torpedo launching tubes. So really nasty stuff there. And then some refit options for you as well, so really good stuff. And yeah, some of these refits can either add or take away weapon systems or bring in more tech as the war progressed. So really just neat uh, system. So you can definitely, um, you know, theme a game with, you know, your buddies or whatever, however you want to play towards different parts of the war. So, um, you know, if you want to stick to like, you know, 1940-ish, um, you can certainly do that. If you want to go all the way late war uh, only, then obviously some of these old refits don't work. So, um, and, you know, you can see how different nations will um, vary in quality as uh, as you follow these years of the war. So um, so that's all the cards there, so that's a whole good chunk there. Let's take a look at some models though, since that's really what we're here for. So, what is this? This was the Kumano and Mogami. So, oops, gotta be careful here, we got some Super small screws here. So let's get this out of the bag and show you guys what we're working with here. So, so we got the Mogami class cruiser. And yeah. So just to show you guys here. So ships are basically complete except for some small upgrades, which is really the guns and some of the other um, equipment that would go on the hull, and you can kind of see the blank spots for those. Uh, these are made out of resin. They're already on a base, which is like a scenic base, basically, so representing water uh, as you're you know cruising along. So you got your Mogami class cruiser on the one side here, to let you know what it is. Very easy to identify. So um, most pictures so far are basically showing that as uh, you, know, you paint the whole thing blue on the side, and then just the letters white it makes it super easy to pick out what is what. And you got the Kumano here and the year. It's really cool. And then here, again, Mogami class, and then this one's the actual Mogami. So I've got the Mogami and the Kumano here. And as you can kind of see, kind of put my hand here so you can get an idea of the size of the ship here. I actually put it in my hand. So this is a cruiser, uh, ladies and gentlemen, just a heavy cruiser. And, you know, it's not quite as long as my hand, but um, that's that's still a good, uh, good size ship. So for those that were worrying about maybe this being... Uh, the models being way too small and um, lacking detail and all that. So let me get real close here for you guys just so you can see. Um, there's definitely detail there. So um, this is not just a blob of plastic as um, some people might have been worried about. This is really good stuff. And um, as you can see here, this is all plastic. So, uh, or sorry, I should say resin. Um, so there's no, no hybrid uh, stuff here, at least so far. So 100% resin. All right, let's move on to some destroyers here. So we got Fletchers and Fubukis, if we can get this package open for you guys. Hopefully. This one is not wanting to be cooperative. There we go. All right, let's get that to fall out here. Okay, so, and we get two apiece here, so let's take a look. Kind of get these upgrade screws out of the way. Let's get that out of the way. We don't need packing slip. So, we got our Americans, Japanese here, so let's take a look at what's going on. All right. So, Fubuki class destroyers, got two of those here, and if we flip these also just Fubuki class so not named ships here but so you can get an idea of the detail there and then we got our Fletchers uh, a little bit of flash that we're gonna have to clean up here not a big deal but um, definitely really good at capturing the detail and again got a little bit of work here as we have to put our uh, upgrade pieces on here so we got one for the Fletchers one for the 
um, Mogami's so that won't be all that difficult uh, or sorry not Mogami's but uh, Fubuki classes so there we go and just as a contrast you know if we take one of the Mogami class cruisers here give you guys a sense of scale so you know uh, including the base uh, you know the two destroyers back to back are a little bit longer but uh, overall, it still gives you a good size on just, you know, how much bigger the cruisers are compared to these destroyers. But even the destroyer models, you know, again, kind of do the hand test here. So it's about as long as uh, fingers here. So definitely not um, tiny or super tiny to the point that uh, it's not a cool model. So then last but not least, let's get into America here. Let me get these American cruisers out. That's actually good there. All right. These are big and chunky. Um, so let's get this all organized here. So we got USS Chicago and Northampton. So there's the Chicago for you guys. There's the Northampton class. And actually, I'm going to flip this around so they're going the same direction. Make that a little bit nicer. So that is the Northampton itself. There's the Chicago. Um, as you can see, a uh, little bit of difference in the construction there, just to represent, um, you know, different ships of the same class, um, having different fits. Just to show you guys the other side here, so again, both of the Northampton class. And again, really great details, so again, people worried about lack of detail on these, um, don't really have much to say here. Um, for the scale and, um, you know, the fact that we're not dealing with, like, again, resin metal hybrids or anything like that um, this is uh, pretty dang fantastic here and again our upgrade sprues turrets and uh, extra bridge pieces and all that fun stuff and then just to do a little size comparison here for you guys so uh, these American cruisers are um, let's see uh, don't know if they're 100% classified as heavy cruisers I think they actually were but um, still a little bit smaller than the Japanese heavy cruisers. Theirs were definitely a little bit longer here. Uh, but give you a size comparison. So we got the Ham Northampton there and then the Kumano next to it. So get a little bit of a sense, again, of the size there. And if we pan back here, let's take one of the Fletchers. Um, let's move this out of the way for you guys. Just to give you guys a breakdown here. So, there we go. So we got all four ships. The Japanese base looks like it's a little bit wider even, too, on the, or not, it's the American one, the Fletcher. Uh, Fubuki's a little bit thinner there. And again, you can see how these uh, scale down or scale up in size, depending on where you want to start. So, got our destroyers here, cruiser, heavy cruisers, um, and then, obviously, there's no battleships in this demo kit, but uh, as you can imagine, this is a heavy cruiser. The battleships are going to be pretty dang chunky. And then we got aircraft carriers and stuff coming too. So that is basically everything in the demo box. So um, hope you guys enjoyed the quick little look at Victory at Sea here. We're going to get all this stuff put together. Um, we've already taken a peek at the rules, so we got a pretty good handle on that. Uh, we're going to run through some how to play videos for you guys, um, break down the factions a little bit more, um, things to look at, things to consider getting. And then we will uh, start wrapping that up and get you guys like an actual demo. Demo, a couple demo battle reports just to walk you guys through the game. So, uh, new game coming out from Warlord Games, Victory at Sea. I believe it's dropping end of June or early July. Definitely worth checking out if you haven't pre-ordered. I think they're still taking pre-orders. They have some really killer bundles for you guys there. So, main nations to start with, Americans and Japanese, obviously, as we saw here. Uh, Great Britain and then Kriegsmarine or German Navy. And possibly down the road, we'll see some of the smaller nations represented as well. So, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Smash that like button if you could, and subscribe, please. And then we will see you down the road.